Greetings and salutations, this is Brian from MechBlade Studios. It's been a while since they talked about visual novels, let alone one by Pixel Fade. We last saw them last year with a mini sequel to Ace Academy, but on August 22nd, 2020, Pixel Fade officially launched their next full project, Ethereal Enigma. It's a reverse isekai story where you, the protagonist, go to a shrine while heading home from school, make a wish, and thus a princess named Erolyn falls from the sky, and now you have to figure out how to get her back home to her realm. Like the other Pixel Fade games, this was made through crowdfunding. Unlike the others, this was actually the first I've contributed to. Despite none of their games being high literature, I felt that because they made me laugh enough times, I decided they deserved a bit of my trust. It's not even a sponsorship, so it's not like you need to disclose that or anything. Baka. But because my own fingerprints are on this game, I trust that Pixel Fade have made a quality product. I'm not a guy. Could have fooled me. Ree! No wonder your technology is so backwards. You're all too perverted to focus on advancement. Where is the manager? Because this is a reverse isekai game, our story takes place in real life Japan. The locations are well drawn and have multiple versions reflecting the time of day. The characters are well drawn and have somewhat improved animations compared to previous games. They all have very distinct faces and while their overall designs could be a bit on the nose, they don't represent the entirety of their overall character. You look like a standard light novel protagonist, your best friend Kosei has wacky quip worthy hair, your supposedly tomboyish cousin Mina wears loose clothes but in bright colors, as well as an Ace Academy hat. The quiet Kira has hair that covers her face and has detailed movements and looks very familiar. And the foreign Hime Dairy Princess Erolyn perplexes me. Not her design itself, she probably looks like a foreign princess from another realm, but get this. Her full name is Erolyn Dawn, a well-endowed blonde from a fantasy world. She somehow has no relation to Lyanna Dawn, a well-endowed blonde from another fantasy world. No assets are reused, but I wonder why they decide to keep so many of the same motifs and the same last name. Her personality is very different from Lyanna, but we'll get to that later. The voice acting is quite good, sounding very natural and well-directed. In fact, Erolyn is played by veteran voice actor Kira Buckland. I am Princess Erolyn Dawn, Duchess of Velenor, third heiress of Velden. Her performance is very well done and well rounded, even if the script doesn't always handle her character the best. Megan Shipman, who voiced Kira, yes, I see the irony here, does a much better job at sounding subdued and awkward without sounding robotic like Amelia. They are, and I wish they'd see that what they're doing is unfair. What could be more important than your own family? YouTuber Lily Pichu plays the 15 year old high school anime character in a slice of life visual novel like a pro, and Joshua Waters does well as this guy. Are you kidding? We've been through this! Music is fairly generic, but oddly catchy after a while. What isn't generic is that the game actually has a full-blown OP, animation, and everything. And that's a nice touch. The modern Pixel Fate system of having limited save slots is carried over, but it doesn't matter as much this time because of the way the routes work, and that you need to choose a romantic interest to stick with pretty quickly, so it's not practical to save on every choice. You can't scroll backwards or past choices, but you can open the menu and save on choices. No mini games are present, not even one about baking. You don't get to pick a person skill set, though you can choose a school club to join. From the Kendo Club, where no Kendo is shown, and is also home to cameos from previous Pixel Fade games, the Good Samaritan Club, which is some sort of vigilante club that either helps with cleaning or exacting vengeance on troublesome students, and the Science Club, which is just discussions about actual scientific topics with no humor. It's an interesting parallel to the athletic, intelligent, and charismatic traits from Ace. Typos have mostly been reined in, I only counted 11 of them, but I noticed a problem I haven't seen before in these games. You know how sometimes in Crystalline the voice line doesn't always say everything in the text box? Mina gives us the opposite here. That sort of thing. Anyway, it got It's another take of the previous line stuck before the next proper line begins. The story opens with a cliché storm of you, your cousin Mina, and your buddy Kosei heading to the first day of high school. Things proceed about how you expect until you decide to head to the local shrine. An old lady convinces you to make a wish because of the large amount of ethereal energy- Ethereal energy dance- Sorry, ethereal energy in the area. No matter what you decide to wish for, including this amusingly specific choice, Princess Erolyn Dawn of Velden falls from the sky and on top of you. She demands you send her back, but you have no idea how to do that, so you have her live with you under the pretense of her being a for an exchange student from Sweden that likes to cosplay. She sucks at keeping her cover. Between all this, the quiet girl named Kira Igarashi, heiress to the Igarashi Corporation, witnessed Erolyn's arrival and decides to help you figure out what's going on and learn about ethereal energy. And then... 
hijinks ensue. Besides the scant few scenes returning to this plot, the rest of the game is just slice of life scenes, including the stock ones you'd expect. Unlike Crystalline, which railroaded you into one romantic route, Ethereal Enigma has two main romantic routes, Errol and Kira. Mina is mercifully excluded, though solo events with her are in the game, and choosing them all unlocks a completely innocent and wholesome scene with her about a time capsule, as she will always automatically get with Kosei no matter what you choose. The route system is pretty simple, you just have to choose to hang out with your chosen waifu at every opportunity, and you spend time with them and try not to choose choices that will piss them off. With all this in mind, it's apparent that Ethereal Enigma is a dedicated dating sim with a plot thrown in to connect the dates and comedy. Thanks to that, it handles relationships quite well and has decently written dialogue, and according to this guide I found, you can get away with more outlandish answers without damaging your route. Amusingly, the game will punish you if you balance everyone too closely, possibly forcing you to choose one romantic option as they're both standing in front of you. I'm kind of split on this plot light approach as a whole. On one hand, it might be a sign that Pixel Fade is given up on storytelling, sticking with a cliche written excuse plot, which is a shame considering that Ace Academy proved that they can make a compelling story when they try. On the other hand, because this game acts as a dating sim, the dates are plentiful and vary, the characters have surprisingly detailed backstories and personalities, and the humor, Pixel Fade's bread and butter, takes center stage. Hey cousin, let's go bowling! I'd like to request a withdrawal from your wallet. I want to talk to your manager! There is no manager. This is just a one-time event on the beach. The rest of the plot is barely worth talking about, but if you really don't want to know how it ends, here's the time code. The story resolves itself very quickly and is basically the same across all the routes except for one. In all endings, Erlen finds a way to get back to Veldin through another undercover Veldin officer masquerading as a student. In most routes, you'll receive a message from her that she's doing well, but in Erlen's route, she obviously finds a way back to you. Also, your aunt and Mina's mom, Emiko, is another undercover Veldin officer and is voiced by Kauri's voice actor. Part of the problem is that there's no antagonist to speak of. Crystalline was the only one to have a concrete villain, while Ace alluded to some off-screen foul play. Here, there's nothing. I thought they were going to make Daisuke some sort of turncoat that maybe had a grudge against the Veldin royal family that found a way to exile Erolin or something, but he's just there doing surveillance on the family's behalf. Because there's no antagonist, there's no conflict. The answer to the mystery of why Erolin is even here is implied to be her aunt sending her to Earth, Thor-style, to learn humility, but we never see that aunt, so that barely counts as a conflict. Unlike the previous games, even though you appear in a handful of CGs, the protagonist's personality is entirely based on choices, with the only backstory being that your parents work in the US while you live in Japan. Erolin has an arc, but is less an arc than a ramp that goes up a little bit and then plunges down immediately. She starts out bratty, bitchy, unable to read a room, usual fish out of water stuff. As she spends more time with you and your friends, she calms down. And by calms down, I mean she loses most of her personality, turning into generic nice girl a la Asuna. This change wasn't even brought about by learning from mistakes, it just sort of happens. When she's full on Hime Dede toward the first half, she never gets in trouble for it and just ends up getting more and more popular, never failing in anything she does. She does investigations for how to get home, and when the opportunity presents itself, after a tearful goodbye of course, it goes off without a hitch. I don't throw this term around lightly, but Erilyn's a Mary Sue. She succeeds at everything, draws people to her, and fits in almost immediately. From what she tells you, Veldin is apparently a hyper-advanced royalty-based society. It may have some sort of connection to Terra from Crystalline, as a phrase you learn from someone at the shrine translates to May the dawn forever illuminate Terra. Kira doesn't have that much more depth, but there's something there. She's an heiress to the Igarashi Corporation, an Apple, Microsoft type company. As a result, her parents are never around because they're out on business, but they make sure that Kira's living conditions are more than comfortable, to the extent that the other contemporary houses you see are in stark contrast to Kira's reuse of the protagonist's house from Ace Academy. Kira resents her parents for not acting like parents, which says something considering that she's actually adopted. You eventually convince her that her folks mean well and do care about her, they're just not the best at showing it. She's an aspiring mangaka, often making sketches in her free time and watching anime. On top of that, she has the usual quiet girl learns to open up, but it's much more gradual and natural than Erilyn finding the off switch on her bitch functions. Mina is the stock athletic emoto archetype. She's apparently tomboyish, something only shown through her hairstyle, certain outfits, and one singular scene where she struggles with wearing heels. Otherwise, she's talking with Erilyn about egg hair washes, falling in love with Kosei, and generally acting like a fairly normal girl. Unlike some cousins of protagonist, Mina often shoots down any teases the wacky choices give you. Also, we have another reality-breaking scene of her voice actress, Lily Pichu, streaming on Twitch while Mina calls Kosei a simp for subbing to her and falling for her overly cute Ayaya personality and the fake voice. 
Kosei is a bit more deft than the standard best friend archetype. He has a bit of self-awareness, though he's still rather goofy. In one scene, he reveals that his family is financially struggling, something that would have precluded him from coming with you and your friends to the hot springs had you not volunteered to pay for him as well. Because his single mother is often working, he and his sister Risa are often in charge of babysitting their baby brother Haruto. Curiously, at the hot springs, you are the one that can potentially come up with the peak of the girl's side idea, and he's the one that at least attempts to talk you out of it. Even more curious, you can just agree with him and dodge the controversy completely. Unlike Ace Academy with Sho, picking Kosei for most of the activities will unlock a secret romantic option that isn't Kosei himself, Risa, his sister. She only exists as a corner sprite despite only appearing in a handful of scenes and for less time than that extra guy from Crystalline, and yet she doesn't have a live 2D model. She gets her own CG at the end, but that's it. She's slightly awkward, often throwing herself at you at every opportunity you appear, but has an impish side as evidenced by her relationship with Mina and this exchange. It must be some influence from one of her voice actresses' previous roles. Hajime and Emiko are basically your parental figures for the story, with the aforementioned twist about Emiko being from Velden not doing much other than diffusing the tension of keeping Erlen's origins a secret. They run a bakery, something that's actually quite popular in real-life Japan. Nice detail. Overall, the scoring of Ethereal Enigma depends on what you're looking for. If you're looking for a well-rounded visual novel with character arcs and compelling story, it gets a 5 out of 10. The story is barely there, but the fun characters and dialogue keep things interesting. It comes across as baby's first visual novel. But if you're looking simply for an entertaining dating sim or a pixel fake completionist, I'd give the game a 6 out of 10. Because you primarily go on dates and laugh your ass off, and thus the game is good at scratching a certain itch. It still loses points at barely having a plot, but it makes up for it by having multiple distinct roots and pixel phase trademark humor. I do personally like the game, but objectively, I just think it's a bit lacking. I recommend waiting for a discount and probably playing Ace Academy first. Between this or Crystalline, I'd pick either one. They're about the same in different ways. So that's it for me for now. What do you guys think? Have you played Ethereal Enigma? Who did you romance? Let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed this review, leave a like and subscribe for more reviews of anime, video games, movies, and tokusatsu. Also hit that bell icon so you know exactly when a new video comes out, and share this video with someone who might find it helpful. Thanks for watching. This is Brian from MechBlade Studios, signing off. <laughs>